Nej, det er fint nok. Vi styrer rundt. Ja, ja. This is Michael Thedale of the Copenhagen Voice. I have been at a meeting at the University of Copenhagen with Sune Haugbøller, who is a researcher uh, involved in the Middle East, and Sune has written a book about truth and reconciliation in the Middle East, and that's his talk today. Sune Haugbøller, is the truth and reconciliation processes in the various Middle East countries, are they political, historical, cultural, or religious? So, yeah, pretty much all of those things you said there. I mean, there are the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Committees that are formed of them in Nigeria and Morocco. And then in, in most Arab countries, you have what we can call the, the Truth and Reconciliation Culture, meaning filmmakers and intellectuals and uh, others in civil society who work for talking about particularly traumatic or difficult things, in the, particularly in the national past. So it's virtually, it, it depends which country we're talking about, I suppose. Yes, but I, I nevertheless, I have tried to write about this uh, across the region. And my argument is that there is a new politics of truth and reconciliation uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and the newness, of course, is if we compare to the 80s, the 70s, or even early 90s, where uh, many of the, the traumatic things, uh, the, the wars and so on, were not discussed as openly as they are today. And, and, and one of the other differences is that um, people uh, who work for this, uh, work for, for talking about the past, try to, to challenge the, the national history, the national story about national history by putting uh, individual stories to the forefront, which wasn't the case at, at all before. Um, the, these um, processes have often been connected with a change of regime, uh, for example, in South Africa. Mm. That's not the case in the Middle East. No, and this is why we don't normally talk about truth and reconciliation, because we haven't had uh, regime change in, in very many countries. Of course, Iraq is one that comes to mind, but Iraq is in the middle of a bloody transition, if you want. Um, but uh, my point is that even though we haven't had change of regimes and, 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 and this clear uh, mark between, uh, you know, something uh, difficult and uh, undemocratic in the past and, and something democratic in the present, which marks in other processes, in other countries, we do have cultures who work for truth and reconciliation. And also, we, we do have uh, a, a committee, official committee, sanctioned by the state in Algeria and Morocco. So coupled with truth and reconciliation cultures and coupled with the international tribunal trials in, in Sudan and Lebanon and Iraq, um, I think we can talk about a phenomenon across the region of, of what I call truth and reconciliation. Do you think we will see it, uh, the process repeated again in a few years' time if, it, if there is a more liberal attitude or if there are changes to regimes? Um, certainly, uh, this is something that is a process, it's procedural, meaning that it's not going to it's something that started, and um, of course, we can hope that the state takes more more action and, uh, and allow the civil society to work for this uh, uh, more of a role, as was the case in as in the case in Morocco. You had uh, you spent some time in Lebanon and in uh, Syria, mm. and Syria has a great influence on Lebanon, but they've had different processes. Can you explain? Yes, I mean. Uh, Lebanon, you have a number of different uh, uh, political groups who are sectarian groups who fought the civil war. So the, the memory of that civil war has been a difficult thing to debate in Lebanon. So what we've seen is the appearance of, of, of people, especially from the late 90s, who are willing to talk about it and work for ways to talk about it. And that's been very possible because of the free media in Lebanon and of course of the relative uh, freedom of that place. Um, in, in Syria, we have a, a rather autocratic uh, regime, and and people who work for talking, talking about, for example, ex-prisoner stories, or talking about the, the massacre in Hama and, and, and taboo things like that, face a much tougher task. So it's much more uh, an uphill struggle in, in Syria. But how has it been received in Syria? Um, 
it's been received in very small circles. It's been difficult to translate this sort of activism into broader national debates, which is not possible in Lebanon, um, especially after the death of Hariri. It's been a very national debate about the civil war, which, which we have uh, really witnessed before 2005. Mm -hmm. So a big differences, but very interesting yeah. cases, both of both of them. Your book is based on your experiences in Lebanon and Syria, is it not? Uh, no, my no. book is an edited book, and, and I'd like to say the title, yes, uh, which is, uh, is uh, The Politics of Violence, Truth, and Reconciliation in the Arab Middle East. It's a route ledge 2009 that's come out. And it's an edited volume, so we have uh, cases in Lebanon, Syria, Sudan, Morocco, Algeria, and Palestine. And then, and, and then a chapter that tries to compare these different countries and their experiences and make some arguments about truth and reconciliation today. Do you think once we have a solution, if we ever have a solution to the Israel-Palestinian uh, problem, that we will see truth and reconciliation there? Yeah, that's a nice dream <laughs> for the future. Soon I hope everything was indeed. Max Tadane for the Copenhagen Press. Please to go in for...